Okay, you Bismillah Rahman Ibrahim. Uh, what I remember uh, in previous lecture, we discussed uh, up to uh, this slide, perhaps uh, that how we can fix the upstream floor level. By the way, what do you know about it? In case of barrage, where do we fix the upstream concrete floor level? How much it should be? Yes. Nobody, nobody knows. ये पढ़ लिया हमने या नहीं पढ़ा? तो चेंज नहीं करते अपस्ट्रीम तो वो नेचुरल बेड पे ही होता है। Yes. Whatever is the natural bed, so we have to fix the natural river bed level, average river bed level at that location as the upstream concrete floor level. And normally, how much we do we keep its length of the upstream concrete floor? Kitni. How much length is being kept? 52? 52 to 75. 75 meter. And uh, then now we have to discuss downstream floor and formation of hydraulic jump. You know, if you see this uh, figure uh, in which uh, the barrage profile is shown, main barrage portion is shown. So this one is, what is this, this uh, part of the main barrage portion? This one. Upstream floor. Yes, upstream concrete floor. And this part? Upstream glasses. Upstream glasses. And this part? Sir, crest. Crest. And this part? Downstream glasses. Downstream glasses. And this part? Downstream floor level. Downstream floor. <laughs> okay. And uh, on the further downstream, we studied that there should be, what should be on downstream of it? <coughs> Apron. No, before a run on downstream side, what should be? Inverted? Filter, sir. Inverted filter, filter. Sir. So here is inverted filter and then there is flexible apron. What about on upstream side? There should be flexible apron. apron. And then further on upstream side, what is that? River bed. There is the uh, natural river bed level. And similarly, after flexible apron here on downstream side, there is the river bed. And uh, you know, we know how to fix this upstream concrete floor level. All right. We already studied that how to fix uh, this crest level. By the way, what we, 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 we learned how to fix the crest level of the weir of a barrage. What we have learned, how to fix it? Yes, the concepts. Actually, I want to know the basic concept because if you know that, then calculation is easy. But if you don't know that, then calculation, you know, you cannot do that. Yes. Actually, the pond level is known. Our first we fix the pond level of the barrage. And that we discussed how we, we, we fix the pond level of the barrage. <coughs> how do we fix it? We know the and at the design flood, what is the stage? Uh, yes, the stage, which is which occurs on the design flood. 
and then due to insertion of this wheel, there would be a flux. So that, uh, you know, the level plus a flux uh, is the minimum pawn level which you have to fix. But you can go further up if uh, do you have some command requirements. OK. And uh, this is the way how you fix the uh, pawn level. Once you have the pawn level, how you can fix the crest level of the wheel of the barrage? Simply we have need to compute this small h. This, this is not capital H, correct a small h. And the small h means head uh, over the crest of the wheel. And this is the velocity head. So this h we can easily compute, uh, which is required to pass how much flood from the wheel, crest of the wheel, design flood, which is usually the 100 year return period flood. So we can find a small h. And so how much, where should be the crest level? Pond level minus small h. Now, you know, the most difficult part uh, of uh, the barrages, this downstream concrete floor, its level and its length. That is the most crucial in the design. Similarly, the downstream glasses, slope ETC also is very, very important. Why? Because the hydraulic jump has to form on the downstream glasses. Uh, what is the most suitable location where the hydraulic jump we expect? What is that location? Glasses. Sir, one yes, third glasses. part of glasses. Yeah, the lower third of the glasses, uh, if the hydraulic jump forms here, it is fine. But at on what stage? On the retrogressed levels, when there is, we assume retrogression here, how much? Maybe from 2.5 to 8 feet retrogression by assuming certain retrograde, retrogression, and then over hydraulic jump should form on the lower third. And you know, when this retrogression dis will disappear, then the hydraulic jump has to move slightly up. This means we are more safe. <coughs> if suppose you have uh, designed this uh, occurrence of the hydraulic jump on the lower one third portion of the downstream glasses uh, at the normal riverbed level, then what will happen after maybe two, three years? Uh, when there would be highest retrogression on the downstream side, then this jump may sweep down. It may come here on the downstream concrete flow and the turbulence will remain uh, up to the riverbed and the riverbed will be further discovered and it may damage the whole uh, barrage structure. So that's why it is important that the over hydraulic jump must form on this lower one third, but at the retrogressed stage, or at considering the retrogressed levels of the downstream river bed. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes. So now we have to study that how we can fix this downstream. Uh, this uh, concrete floor level and how much should be the length of this downstream concrete floor and where this hydraulic jump will occur on the downstream glasses. So we need computation about it and that we want to discuss now. So downstream floor and formation of hydraulic jump. You know the basic equations uh, which we studied in high subject of hydraulic engineering for hydraulic jump, those are will be used 
to locate the position of the jump. And you know, we we once we compute uh, the and uh, the y1 and y2, or here we say d1 and d2, which are the conjugate depths of the jump. Uh, and and then we can also compute the length of the profiles so on the upstream of the jump uh, that you know is, is using either a step equation or dynamic equation. So we can know that where the hydraulic jump is going to form. So to determine the downstream floor, the downstream energy level must be fixed. So if we know the upstream energy level, how we can find the upstream energy level? A specific energy. What is the equation to compute a specific energy on upstream side? So uh, this is the depth of the flow plus this is the velocity head. So from here to here, this is the specific energy on upstream side. And then this would be the energy line on upstream side. OK. So this is the energy line on upstream side. And due to this occurrence of this hydraulic jump, this much is the head loss. And if we know this head loss, then what we can determine downstream energy level we can determine. Simply, if we know the upstream energy level, minus head loss is the downstream energy level. And if we know that, subtracting E2, we can get, uh, you know, uh, the level of the downstream concrete flow. So it means what is required? We need the value of? Head loss. Head loss. And uh, you know, initially, uh, the value of the head loss uh, we have to assume maybe three to four feet head loss or 15% of known total head on upstream side. So you can start your working and you have to do iterations because this is just your assumed value of the head loss. <coughs> So we know that head loss is equal to where it has gone. Yeah, this is the equation of head loss E1 minus E2. And from here E2 is equal to E1 minus HL. And uh, but the thing is, this is also one equation to compute the head loss in terms of D2 and D1. So head loss is a function of D1 and D2 only. And what are D1 and D2? The conjugate depths. Conjugate depths. Depth of flow before and after the hydraulic jump. And uh, this is the equation of, what is this equation? Specific energy. No, 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 no. This is the equation of hydraulic jump for rectangular channels. If you remember the subject hydraulic engineering, and luckily uh, up to this, uh, we studied on campus, and I derived these equations on the on the whiteboard. If you remember, so this is the same equation to which we were saying Q square over G is equal to Y1, Y2 product of conjugate depths into average of conjugate depth. Is, is not the same equation? Ye do ko idha le hai, hai na? Kya hai? Yes, sir. Oh, oh, gee, that is the same. So, we, this is the equation of hydraulic jump and this is the equation of hydraulic jump for head loss. So what are unknown in both equations? If the small Q is known, which is the discharge per unit width flowing uh, through the weir. If we know this, and if we have these two equations, which two unknowns we can determine by assuming head loss? Because we don't know head loss. So head loss we will assume. Q we know this one, 
and there are two equations and there are two unknowns. It means D1 and D2 we can compute. Is it fine? Ho jayengi? Yes, sir. So this is how you can compute D1 and D2. And uh, once uh, uh, you have this, then what you can do once you have the D2, then find V2 to compute the velocity head. On the down steep of the hydraulic jump, <clears throat> And what is D2 plus V2 square over 2G? This is the specific energy at section 2 here. At this section. I am sorry. Uh, this section, huh? Am I right? Can we? Yes. Yes. So once I know the E2, which is the specific energy on downstream side, then what simply I have to, how I have to find the downstream slower level, downstream energy level minus E2. So that how I can fix the downstream uh, floor level, which is this one. You know, this flow, this floor level. Is it clear? But you have made some assumption. What is that? Which assumption you made? You had loss of hydraulic jump. Yes, had a loss. So it means uh, you will uh, uh, compute D1 and D2 and this, and then uh, again you will compute the head loss and check that the head loss which you assumed, are you getting the same ETC? And you will do the iterations. Now the how the length of the downstream floor we have to compute. The length of the downstream floor should be equal to 4.5 times the E2, which is the remaining specific energy available on downstream side. It's four and a half times minus three times jump submergency. So what is jump submergency that we will discuss maybe after uh, 10 minutes and uh, then you will know that how this is to be computed. Anyway, this is the equation to compute the length of the downstream floor. The length of the downstream floor should be sufficient to accommodate all the possible turbulence which which is being produced by the formation of the hydraulic jump on the downstream glaciers. OK, so that's why we require longer length. And if by some mistake this hydraulic jump instead of here, if it it it, it has started at this location, uh, you know here, then what will happen? This hydraulic, if this is the location of the hydraulic jump, then we need more length of the downstream concrete flow because the turbulence should uh, be reduced up to that length. So that is the drawback of if the hydraulic jump does not form on the downstream glasses and if it forms on the downstream of the downstream glasses. OK. So we always try that our hydraulic jump should form on the lower third of the downstream glasses uh, with uh, uh, with the which uh, levels retrogress levels. OK, now as uh, you know that we have to make assumptions and on the basis of assumptions we have to do everything. So we need some, you know, the very quick uh, solutions uh, how to fix the downstream floor level ETC. Uh, so for that, <coughs> there are three methods which are derived from the basic equations basic hydraulic jump equations, uh, which by using which we can determine the floor level and the position of the hydraulic jump on the downstream glasses. These approaches are these three approaches. Number one is the Crumbs approach. Second is the Blanche curves. Crumbs approach, basically Crumbs are also curves. Crumbs curves, Blanche curves and conjugate 
depth method. So these are the three methods uh, which we can use uh, to fix the downstream floor level or to know the position of the hydraulic jump where it is, it will uh, occur or it will be created. Now these are the basic equations of the hydraulic jump. Uh, most of the equations you already know. So here D2, uh, that is the conjugate depth after the hydraulic jump. It is D1 by 2 plus under root of uh, this thing. This uh, we know that similarly. Head loss, we know it is equal to E1 minus E2. And just putting the value of E1 and E2, the equation would be like this. And the head loss is also equal to this D2 minus D1 Q over 4 times D1 into D2, where D1 and D2 are the conjugate depths. So this equation we, we have derived at undergrad level, which is the equation of hydraulic jump for rectangular channels. Then uh, this D2 in, in at undergrad level uh, in, on the in uh, seventh semester, we derive this equation also in terms of the fruit number one. So this is the D2 equation and then V1 we already know is Q over Y1, yeah, D1 and V2 is equal to that and the head loss if it is equal to this, this is equal to that. From here E1 is equal to E2 plus head loss. And from here we can say that what is equal to E1? E1 is equal to D1 plus V1 is square over 2G and V1 is equal to Q over D1. So we can say that V1 is square is Q1 is square over D1 is square. So this is equal to this right hand side, which is as it is E2 plus HL. So here what we are saying that what uh, the, you know, uh, Krumps say that, that this right hand side E2 plus HL, that is equal to K plus F. Now what is K? What is K? This is K. So can anybody tell me what is the K? Sir, uh, it is a height from the crest to the energy energy level. To the energy okay. level. So what we can say it, uh, to it? Energy over the crest. This is the total head. Total head with respect to the crest of the veer. This is the crest of veer. So this is the total head. Total head means this small h. So from here to here it is small h. And this is how much? So velocity head. V square over 2g. Okay, uh, so this K, and what is the F by the way? <coughs> what is F? See this point, G. Uh, sir, F is the point where it is uh, supposed to form the hydraulic jump from the crust. Actually, this is the vertical distance uh, downstream of the crest of the weir where hydraulic jump will form on the downstream glasses. So this is this distance is D1 and this is D2. So these are the conjugate depths. Is it clear? Yes, sir. OK. So K plus F is equal to E1, that is equal to E2 plus HL. HL. Is it clear up to this? OK, now we can go further. Derivation of the Crumbs curve equation are Crumbs curves. How the Crumbs curves were derived? This is the equation number one. I think you know very well this equation. What is the name of this equation? This is the Pali equation. D1 plus D2, ye do either le hai. into D1, oh sorry, into D2 or Q square over G. So this is the 
What is this then equation? Hydraulic jump equation. Yes, this so is hydraulic, equation. Jump, equation hydraulic jump. jump for rectangular channel, which you have derived in seventh semester. Now, what is the DC? DC here, YC, critical depth. And we know this equation, Q square over G, power one over three. You have already derived this equation. Then, what is this Q square over G would be equal to? So the DC ki kya ho gai? Power Q ho gai? Hai na? Bhai, from here. So, this Q square over G is DC power Q. So, instead of Q square over G, I can put DC Q. So, this is the same equation number one. And now, dividing equation three by DCQ. So once you will divide it, so this is DC, 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 this is DCQ. So it is D1 over DC, D2 over DC, and D1 plus D2 over DC, that is equal to two. This is the equation number four. Now we know that head loss in the case of hydraulic jump, that is D2 minus D1 cube over 4 D1 D2. Okay. And then dividing equation 5 by DC, which is this equation. So HL over DC. And here uh, D2 over DC minus D1 over DC into this is cube. Then 4 D1 D2 into DC is square. Is it clear? Tell me. <coughs> yes, sir. Yes. Now we know that the specific energy at, at, the, uh, at the section one of the hydraulic jump at the location of conjugate depth one, how much is this specific energy? E, E1 is equal to D1 plus V1 is square over 2G. What is equal to V1 is square over 2G? That is Q square over D1 is square. So this is the V1 is square over 2G. So Q square over G over 1 over 2 D1. And what is equal to Q square over G? That is DC cube. So DC cube over 2 D1. This is equation number 8. Hence, this E1, which was given in equation number 7, it would be D1 plus this dc cube over 2 d1 because this is equal to v1 square over 2g and now dividing equation 9 by dc so this is equation 9 so e1 over dc that is equal to d1 over dc plus dc square over 2 d1 so this is the equation number 10 so what is equal to e1 E1 is equal to K plus F. Now, please check that. So, how much is the specific and uh, is the energy E1 K plus F, which is the specific energy here at this location? Kitni hoti hai specific energy? Y1 ya D1 plus V1 is square over 2G. This is the V1 is square over 2G. Is it okay? Mm, yes, sir. yes, sir. So it means uh, we got equation number four. I am sorry, probably. <laughs> equation number six. And the equation number, uh, this one. Eleven. And uh, using these equations, uh, we the crump has plotted graphs in this form. And these curves are known as crumps curves. So crump reduced above equations, these equations, and uh, in dimensionless form. Are these equations in the dimensionless form? What is D1 over DC? Is dimensionless form. And then HL over DC, 
and then K plus F over DC. These are dimensionless forms. So now we would like to see uh, his, his curves. What is the variable on X axis which he has provided? Kaunsa variable hai? HL over DC. HL over DC. Head loss over critical depth. On Y axis, there are three variables. One is the K plus F over DC. Second, D1 over DC. And third, D2 over DC. Okay. D2. What is D2? Conjugate depth. Now, this is the graph for D1 over DC. This is the C, critical depth. Huh? D1 over DC, this one. This is the graph. This is the graph for D2 over DC. And this is the graph for K plus F over DC, like that. So he has assumed several values and using those equations, so the plot of these three, four equations, three equations are like that. So how many are the dependent variables? How many are dependent variables in Crumb's curves? Three, sir. Three, con con se, K plus F over DC, D1 over DC, D2 over DC. Now, what is the dependent variable? HL over uh, DC. Hanji? Independent variable, sir. Independent variable concept. HL over DC. HL is the head loss. Okay, now see that what is happening to the to this curve. What this curve says that with increase in HL over DC, what is happening to the D1 over DC? That value is increasing or decreasing decreasing okay what about this curve d2 over dc with increase in hl over dc d2 over dc increases and the same is the case for k plus f over dc now what the crump crump curves gives us if i know the head loss for any given value of the head loss or you will compute head loss over DC and you know DC we can compute easily. Kya khayal hai? Ho jayegi? Kaise nikalte hai DC? G by Y C Q square over G power 1 over 3. Hai na? Achha, yes, okay, for any value of the head HL over DC, so this is the value of, ye kiski value hai yaan se yaan tak? K plus F over DC. Yeah, 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 value from here to here. This is the D1 over DC ki value. And from here to here, what is this value? This is D2 over DC. And then this way we can compute what we can compute from here. D1 nikal jayegi. Or dusra kya niklega? D2 niklegi. And what the third thing you will compute? You can compute. K plus F. Nikal jayega. Yes, Is it okay? Now, if you know the K plus F, now you come here. Now you got this total distance K plus F. So this you have the K. So you will measure simply, uh, you will subtract the value of K from K plus F, you will get the F value. And what is F? F is the vertical distance from the crest of the weir where the hydraulic jump will form on the downstream glasses. So means the crumb curves, these are helpful to know the location of occurrence of hydraulic jump on downstream glasses. Is it clear to you? Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> Once, so you know the location of the uh, hydraulic jump, and then you have the value of the D2, 
and once you have the value of the d2 what you can compute how much is this distance ye wala distance kitna hai v square root 2 ji this is the v2 square over this is the velocity head so okay so if i know this and i know d2 so what is this all the downstream energy this is the e2 hai na this is the e2 so it means you know this so subtract e2 what you will get ye kya hai downstream flow level downstream flow level you will get easily so the crump curves help you to determine the location of the hydraulic jump on the downstream glasses as well it can gives you the floor level of the downstream concrete flow is it clear now these are the practical crumps curves or crump approach now what wh what is the variable on x axis hl over dc how many are the variables on y axis three variables this is the x over c x over c means y d1 over dc and uh, this is the y over c what is y over c d2 over dc and this axis is k plus f over c c means dc critical depth so this is one axis y axis this is another y axis and this is the third y axis and these three curves are available with us so if i know the numerical value of my hl over dc and uh, into 1 over c uh, then i can determine you know uh, the value of suppose if my value is here so you you may draw this line and this is the value of x over c or d1 over dc and this is the value of the k plus f over dc and this is the value from here to here this is the value of d2 over dc so practically how you can use these crump curves now come to the blanch curves <laughs> actually what the blanch has done blanch has plotted the graphical relationship between head loss and e2 so these are the blanch curves and what is the e2 the total downstream energy so he has used these equations of head loss second equation e2 is equal to d2 plus q square over 2g 2g d2 square and this q uh, this is the equation of hydraulic jump so for the known q and known are assumed head loss by using these two equations what we can determine d1 the values of d1 and d2 and if we know the d2 then we can compute e2 and once we know the e2 then we have simply to subtract e2 from the upstream energy uh, from the downstream energy line uh, we have to subtract e2 then we will get the downstream flow level is it clear yes sir yes sir these are the practically blanch curves so on y axis what is the variable head loss on x axis what is the variable e2 are these curves for uh, dimensionless variables do you think head loss is dimensionless no sir and e2 is dimensionless no you know in case of blanch curve Uh, in case of crumps curve uh, those were dimensionless but this is not dimensionless so for any value of the head loss and if you know the value of the discharge 
this charge per unit width, you can get, sorry, you can get the value of here. This is the value of the E2. And once you know the E2, so you know the downstream energy level minus E2, that would be downstream flow level, that how this blanch curves help us. Okay. Now this is a practical so, blanch curve. Yes. So dono me hum blanch or crumbs me head loss assume karte hain. Ji assume head loss hi karte hain. Ye curves curves ka fayda hi hai ki your calculations becomes easier. <coughs> Suppose ye Q aapka fix hai na. Yes, this sir. Q you already know. Okay. And this is the practical blanch curve. So for any value of the uh, this head loss and for any value of the discharge in Q mix, you can compute the value of the uh, this uh, E2. OK, now the third is the conjugate depth method. And in the conjugate depth method, uh, you you the main thing is this is H. Uh, this H is the head above the crest of the V, and this one is the V square over 2G. And uh, so this total is the head, total head on above the crest of the V, and this capital F. Capital F is the is the uh, vertical distance of the crest with respect to downstream concrete floor level. So this is the concrete floor level, and uh, the the crest of the weir is at a distance of F vertically up. So what the conjugate method says that total energy on upstream with this with the downstream floor level as datum is equal to E. So this is the E energy. This is the E. So but this E is with respect to downstream floor level. OK, please keep in mind. Then this E would be equal to what? F plus H plus V square over 2G. So this one is the is the F. From here to here, it is F plus H plus V square over 2G. This should be E. So this is the one and this V naught is velocity of approach with which the liquid is approaching. <laughs> then phi is the velocity coefficient. Its uh, value may be from 0 0.8 to 1. And alpha is the coefficient of non-uniform velocity distribution. Its value may be from 1 to 1.1. And Fz is the function of Z. Uh, it has this equation. It is it depends on Z and here Z and also on phi, which is the velocity coefficient. This equation is an English system. This is in the system international. Or we can use uh, a more simpler equation in terms of uh, this one. In terms of small q, as small q discharge per unit width we already know, which is passing uh, over the weir. So its power e raised to 3 by 2. This is the function of z. And uh, then the z uh, we can compute as d1 over e. And because the z is a function of upstream conjugate depth d1. And uh, its value is 0 0.001 to 0.67 for a strong jump. And then the Z dash is a function of downstream conjugate depth D2. So Z dash is D2 over E. OK. And for any value of phi and function of Z and Z and Z dash uh, can be obtained from conjugate depth tables. So these are the conjugate depth table. Uh, this table is continuously moving like here. So the first column is function of Z. So its value is from 0 0.008 to this one, 3 point something. 
and uh, this is the z value what is the lowest value of z 0.001 and uh, this is the highest value of the z 0.67 okay and you know this is 0.001 to 0.67 so those all values of the z or uh, which uh, gives us a strong jump are given here so once we have determined the value of the z and z dash and using this these relationship we can compute d1 and d2 d1 is a function of z d2 is a function of z dash and these values were known so d1 and d2 can be computed and then jump submergency can be computed which is the depth of pool minus d2 so here you can see what is jump submergency so this is the depth of the pool and this is the d2 which we will compute so this minus that is jump submergency now what are the steps in this method so first of all you have to assume any value of f the f sir, is this jump submergency repeat kar de sir jump submergency ko ye ye dekhe ye depth of pool hai depth of pool uh, is due to what is due to the slope of the bend of the river to so, what depth of pool id hai right? na and this d2 which you, we will compute because by assuming head loss so d1 and d2 we will compute the, 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 this d2 may not be same as d so their difference is jump submergency so this much is jump submergency then compute e e is equal to just the total head with respect to downstream floor level so f plus h plus v square over 2g then compute function of z using this equation and then determine z and z dash from tables so these are the tables if i know the function of z i can find z and i can find z dash for any value of the phi suppose uh, the value of uh, my function of z is this much the value of the z would be this and for any value of the my phi is let's say 0.95 then the value of the uh, this uh, z dash would be 0.372 is it and then what is the next once we i know the z and z dash i can easily compute d1 and d2 using these equations d1 and d2 now compute jump submergency d pool minus d2 and repeat all the steps till little submergency is obtained or when the d2 becomes equal to depth of the pool so this is how uh, this conjugate depth method gives us what give it gives us kya de raha hai hame what it is giving us level of बोलो तो सही यार डाउनस्ट्रीम फ्लोर सर यस लेवल ऑफ डाउनस्ट्रीम फ्लोर लेवल सो टुडे देन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड द थ्री कर्व्स आर थ्री अप्रोचेस टू फिक्स द डाउनस्ट्रीम फ्लोर लेवल फर्स्ट वन वाज द क्रंप कर्व सेकंड वाज द ब्लेंच कर्व थर्ड वाज द कंजुगेट डेप्थ मेथड ओके तो पहला जो दे रहा है जो क्रम्प कर्व है वो हमें क्या देता है डाउन स्ट्रीम फ्लोर लेवल भी दे रहा है एंड आल्सो इट टेल्स अस वेयर द हाइड्रोलिक जंप विल फॉर्म ऑन डाउन स्ट्रीम ग्लेसेस सेकेंडली व्हाट वाज द मेथड ब्लेंच कर्व्स वो क्या देते हैं हमें दे गिव्स अस द डाउन स्ट्रीम फ्लोर लेवल थर्ड इज कंजुकेट डेप्थ मेथड वॉट इट गिवज अस इट गिवज अस द डाउन स्ट्रीम फ्लोर लेवल सो दीज आर द्री अप्रोचेस Uh, which we can use to fix the downstream floor level and that was the most important and with this we have finished this chapter what was the name of the chapter surface flow considerations in barrage design okay kyun bhai theek hai that's okay yes, and uh, today we want to you know stop here and i would like to take your attendance 
And uh, that's all. If you have any question, very quickly you can ask me because the time is too short. Ji bhai. No questions? No, sir. No, sir. My side. Okay, then thank you very much. And next time, inshallah, we will start subsurface flow considerations in barrage design. Okay. So uh, now, uh, thank you very much. Allah Hafiz. Thank you, sir. Allah